Hello, happy new year and welcome to the Makers Exchange. My name is Leah and I will be your host for this hour long event. And joining me today from the studio are some of your very favorite craftsy instructors, Jen Lucas, Brenda KB Anderson, and Emily Steffen. So stick around for some great crafting ideas and inspiration straight from the experts. Throughout the entire next hour, we are streaming live and taking your questions. So of course, I want to direct your attention to the chat box. We want you to make sure to use it. We want to hear from you. And that chat box is for questions. You can direct them to the group at large, or if you have a question for one of our specific experts, make sure to let me know who you're answer asking that question to, and I'll make sure to direct it that way. Also, it is the new year. So if you have any resolutions of your own or anything fun you're taking on in the new year, why not drop it into the chat so we can get a little bit of community sourcing going on so everybody knows what we're up to in the crafting community this year, 2023. So it is time now to meet our amazing panel of experts. You're going to see their faces here, but I'm going to introduce them to you one at a time. Brenda KB Anderson is first. Please introduce yourself. Tell us just a little bit about the crafts you enjoy. Hi, I'm Brenda KB Anderson, and I love so many different crafts. Um, my main gig now, though, is crochet. I do also knit, and I love sewing, and really any kind of art craft, anything like that, anything I can get my hands on. I'm very tactile. I love it all. So. Perfect. And then over to the side of Brenda, we've got Jen Lucas. Jen, a same thing to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the crafts that you're enjoying. Yeah, I'm Jen Lucas. I'm a knit and crochet designer. Um, I work primarily in knitting these days, but do also do some crochet designing. Um, in addition to that, I kind of love all the crafts, just like Brenda. Um, I especially love cross stitch. I'm trying to dabble into sewing and quilting a little bit. So I've really, I've never met a craft I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think you're in good company. Our final panelist, Emily Steffen. Welcome to Emily. Same thing to you to finish us off. Yeah, my name is Emily Steffen, and I am from OEA Studio, and I am the same as these ladies. There's not a craft, I like that line, there's not a craft that I've met that I didn't like. <laughs> Maybe they didn't like me as much, but that's another story. Um, I, I do a lot of painting, a lot of drawing. Every night I sit down with my iPad and draw, because I feel like I'm telling my kids all the time that creativity is a muscle. So the more you use it with your hands, the better you are. I could go on and on about that. Um, but I love to paint and draw. I love yarn. Tactile is a big thing, just like mm -hmm. you, Brenda. Um, and I sew as well. So I feel like it's creativity is just kind of like this overarching thing. Like, let's just be creative with our life and do the things. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's fun to be here with all the similar yeah, like-minded ladies. Uh, it's also fun that we're going to do all the things live <laughs> in studio, yes. but also we've got a download for everybody that's watching. So we have a free guide available for you. It's three yarn craft ideas. So yarn does seem to be kind of today is uh, connective tissue, so to speak. So you need to try these three yarn craft ideas. Plus there's a free goal setting worksheet included as well. We all know goals can help us keep on track uh, when we have something that we want to achieve in the year. Sometimes it helps to have a little bit of written uh, motivation. So that worksheet is in there as well. You can download it in the description. So check out that link. Um, and all of our panelists have provided something for this project. So as we go through today, I'm going to have them each shout out what part of the project they included and why. But before we even get into that, I know that while we are working through this hour, Brenda's going to start us off with something that our other two panelists are going to be jumping in on. So I'm pretty sure now's a good time to intro that project. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had this crazy idea. Since the three of us have not been in the studio together, I really wanted to do something. I wanted to make something with these guys just together because, you know, we need to celebrate some yarn here and the togetherness of this whole situation. <laughs> um, so what we're going to try to do within this live is we are going to try to make a big colorful scarf. You'll see two balls of yarn here. So we're going to start in the middle of the scarf and then we're going to crochet in one direction and knit in the other and all three of us are going to get to work on it and we'll just see how this all sorts <laughs> out during this event. We We've have never no done idea. this before. We haven't tried this. We, you know. So let me just start a little bit here by showing you um, how I'm going to begin. So because we're going to be going in one direction and then going in the other direction, we need to start in the middle with our yarn. So what I did was I, I have two balls of yarn and I'm going to attach them to each other. So then you might be thinking, why not just have one ball of yarn? Because we need to have 
we need to start in the middle of the yarn instead of on just one end. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, a spit, spl spit splice or a spit join, but I'm not actually going to use my spit. I'm just going to use water. So this only works with 100% wool yarn, and I'm using a very thick, a super bulky roving, and I just sort of spread out the ends of each side. Okay. Some people will tell you, um, and I do this sometimes, to take off some of the yarn and then join them together. But because I like to use so much friction on this particular yarn, I'm not removing any yarn. All I'm doing is just spreading it out and frizzing it up as much as possible. So you've got your two pieces. It's maybe about four inches or so long, and you're just going to lay them on top of each other. And I try to kind of mix them up a little bit like that first. And then you just take a little bit of your spit. <laughs> <laughs> I did not spit in this bowl, by the way. This is just <laughs> plain water from the, the tap. And then you just kind of dab it on there, or you can put it on the palms of your hands a little bit. Basically, you just want a little bit of water. If there's too much, like there is now, it's a little slidey at first, but don't worry. It'll get sticky in a minute. And what you're trying to do is you're just rolling it back and forth. And I kind of go in like a little circle sometimes too, just like this, to just kind of get those scales on the wool to stick to each other. This is awesome. So I've never so seen this done yeah, before. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> what you're doing I'm is you're just, you're just felting it in your mm -hmm. hands together. So the two balls of yarn that I have on the table, those all came from a whole bunch of different solid colors. And I just had leftovers, so I just took a couple hours. <laughs> That's awesome. Crazy balls of yarn. OK, so now we're able to start in the middle. And we're going to begin by making a chain. So we'll have a slip knot on our hook. And then I'm going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm skipping that first chain and I'm going to do a half double crochet into the second chain. And I am flipping it over to work on the bottom bump. So there's the V's, turning it upside down. So you yarn over, insert under that bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. We're going to continue making half double crochets across the end here. Um, and maybe now we could do another question. Um, while I get while I go across this just across this chain here Perfect, so Brenda while you're doing the chain Why don't you start us off first by sharing the first craft that you've tried? Okay. And then what is the newest craft that you've taken on so sure. kind of going back to the beginning and then catching you up at the present Okay, so the first crafts that I remember trying I was very young I remember doing a little woodworking with my dad in his shop I was uh, making airplanes <laughs> but really <laughs> just taking some pieces of wood and sanding them and nailing them together I remember doing that I also remember when I was about four my mom taught me how to hand sew yeah. um, and then uh, she also taught me how to crochet when I was just a little bit older than that too so and then we we always did lots of painting and and drawing and making dolls and beadwork and friendship bracelets and we had a very crafty childhood um, and the latest one that I tried <laughs> this this was a little bit of trial and error but I tried making a snow globe for this winter season oh, like a real snow kids. globe what? yeah well like I used a jar and then I glued some toy like action figures that yeah. my kids had to the lid and it put water in it and put some glitter and glycerin to make it float a little bit slower. Whoa. Did it work? It mostly worked, but <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a lot a lot more tr <laughs> tricky than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I was stubborn and I I uh, just kept going for it. Okay, so I I reached the end of my row and half double crochet, and I'm just going to show you here. Um, I'm going to do two turning chains. So one, two. And then I'm going to turn my work, and then I'm going to work half double crochets, just like we were, in through that back loop. Okay, so this is the front loop here. That's the back loop. So we yarn over, and then we're going to insert in the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through three. I'll do one more here. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through three. All right, and I'll just continue with this while we... Talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to jump in and say we've got some good hellos coming in from people that are viewing pretty much from all over. Nancy, hello from Oklahoma. 
We have Liz from a chilly but sunny day in Torrington, Connecticut. Uh, Alicia is viewing from Vancouver. Don is watching from the Republic of Washington, Republic Washington. Don is working on two blankets, washcloths, and a sweater. So Don's got oh, quite busy. a list going for 2023. Um, we've got Katie watching from St. Paul, Minnesota. So I'm going to say a theme here for most people. Nana's watching from Central Illinois. We might be um, a chilly crew that's watching today. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking at this. Uh, this trio of people working on the same project as a really nice way maybe to get together with some friends inside, put on a fun TV show or a movie, and then just hang out with a blanket across your laps and then work on this together. There's nothing better uh, than working on a blanket while under that exact oh, blanket. Yeah. That's the best <laughs> when your blanket oh. gets big enough that you can be under it. <laughs> it's like the rules of winter yeah. knitting and mm -hmm. winter crochet. You reap the benefits immediately. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Perfect. And another Don just popped in is from Manitoba, Canada. So we're keeping that going. If anybody's from a warm spot right now, maybe <laughs> yeah, drop that know. into the chat and let us know so we can live vicariously through you. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to throw it to Jen next here to keep the conversation mm -hmm. going. Jen, I'd like you to highlight what you put into our little package, our download, and mm -hmm. kind of explain what you chose and why and a little bit about it. Okay, great. So this is the Celine cowlet, and it is sort of that cross between a shawl and a cowl. So when I'm making a small shawl like this, what I kind of hate about it is that um, you would just have two long ends and then you have to wrap it around and well, it falls off. So <laughs> with the cowl, you can just join in the round mm. and finish it off. So then it looks like a shawl but it's a cowl. Um, and so I thought that this would be a really great project for the new year in a lot of places. It is still cold. And this is a technique that isn't widely used. There are more and more patterns out there with this type of construction, um, but it's one I've really started using a lot recently, and I think it's one that's fun to try. And once you do this pattern, then you'll be able to see that you can take almost any top-down triangle pattern and turn it into a cowl if you want. Ooh, that would be really great to get a little variety in mm -hmm. once you get comfortable with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking, speaking of comfortable, Elizabeth has commented that Elizabeth wants to be a knitter. Mm -hmm. And Craftsy does have a 14 day learn to knit series to help you get started. So if that's your goal for 2023, you can check out the link in our chat box. Uh, it's that 14 day learn to knit series. It's going to give you a really great basis for some of that knitting technique that you need to build on when you want to do a little bit more complicated patterns as you go. Um, as asked, Donna B jumped in, greetings from Southern California, where almost <laughs> nobody knits and crochets. <laughs> so I actually think this is a great lead in. I'm going to throw this next one over to Emily. Emily, I know you dabble in a lot of um, at least the events that I've worked on with you kid friendly, uh, maybe not necessarily warmth based uh, <laughs> crafts and things. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started in crafting? Um, and then again, what have you picked up recently that's kind of new to you? Yeah. So I'm similar to Brenda, where I grew up in a very creative household. And one of the first things my mom taught me how to do was sew. So I remember her sewing room, of course, I'm sure I'm glamorizing it because I was a little kid, but I remember walking into her sewing room and there was like bolts of fabric everywhere and buttons galore and zippers, you know, coming out of drawers and things. It felt very like animated. <laughs> and I, I remember being fascinated by what she was doing. And she started teaching me, you know, very easy patterns like pajama pants and uh, pillowcases things and like little um i had american girl dolls when i was really little so we made like little things for them like you know little blankets and things that required straight stitches but that got me hooked on the idea of oh my gosh anything in my brain that i think of i can actually make which i love because it didn't limit me to one thing so i feel like it kind of put me down this path of hey, I can make that, I can try that, I can do that, and that like curiosity and wonder as a kid. So it's, it's, it's still in my life, which maybe is not the best adult trait sometimes to not be as adulty as I should be, but, but um, one of the things I do every night, <clears throat> now I said this a little bit before, is that I, every night, like when my husband and I are hanging out or you know after the kids go to bed or something, because I have really little kids, I sit down and doodle because it's just like how my brain processes, the junk of the world and the things that are tricky or hard. 
and I doodle on my iPad. And the digital art world is so new to me, and I know I've not even like touched the surface of it, but I feel like that's the newest and I say newest, like the last couple of years. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like what set me up for that as a kid, right, is the whole idea of like living in a creative home and having adults or even older people around me that are like, yeah, try this, do this, and that encouragement of trying something and not being perfect at it. Because I feel like sometimes, you know, as far as New Year's resolutions, we settled on this path of like, we have to try something new and be the perfect mm -hmm. knitter within two days, or I watch one tutorial and now I know what I'm doing. And in reality, nobody knows what they're doing in that way, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so first was sewing and then it kind of led me down and I feel like I'm doing a lot more digital art. Um, but you know, in the middle is all the things that we've kind of touched on and talked about, which I love. Amazing. Now, I think I saw on the table, Emily, is that one of your doodles on oh, the paper? No. This, is, this is Brenda's amazing New Year's. Brenda. Yeah. I know. We're this is awesome. Up. This We're is inspiring. Very cool. This, <laughs> this oh, is awesome. Let's talk so, about this. So I was thinking about New Year's resolutions, and I'm just such a visual person. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just draw pictures to remind myself of what I really wanted to accomplish this year. So um, on here, I have right here, I want to learn <laughs> how to spin. Here's my little <laughs> spindle. Um, and I, you know, while I, was, while I was doing this, I was thinking, okay, like, why do people not make their New Year's resolutions? Like, what are the big pitfalls? Like, people say, oh, I didn't have time, or I, I just didn't know where to start, mm -hmm. or I wasn't held accountable by anyone, <laughs> so I just didn't do it. Because it was a secret resolution. You know? mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, how could we tackle those three things, right? So not having the time, I'm trying to make sure I put everything on my calendar so that I make the time for the things that are really important to me. And I am notoriously bad for just biting off too much more than I can chew mm -hmm. and chewing it anyway and feeling like I'm not, you know, getting, doing all the things that I really want to do. So I'm going to try to be better about that. Um, another thing is, you know, to, about the being held accountable thing. Um, if you have a crafting group or you just tell people, like friends in a group on the internet or whatever, like, hey, I'm gonna do this thing this year, then you might be a little bit more mo motivated to do yeah. it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's something you wanna do, so you just put yourself out there. So I'm gonna put myself out there and say that I'm going to design a blanket this year, which Ooh. I generally don't do. I've made a couple of baby blankets, but large projects are generally not my thing because mm -hmm. I like to switch things up all the time. Um, so I put some steps here how I'm going to accomplish that. Okay, first publicly commit. Whoops, I did that. Yep. <laughs> um, check. And then keep the size manageable. So that's something I, I got to rein myself in a little bit. And then one square at a time. So I'm going to design it with one square with a different technique as I go. And that way it won't seem so overwhelming. So mm -hmm. if you want to make a visual board like this, you know, you can do some doodles or you can, you know, if you, if you don't really like drawing, you could cut out pictures from magazines or find stuff on the internet. Or, it, you know, if you respond well to just words, you can just put some bullet points or some words that help you feel like you're gonna you know, reach your goals to remind you what's important. You don't have to have drawings, of course. Um, I'm just visual, so yeah. I sometimes skim over all the words and just look at the pictures. <laughs> I know how I'm like that, so I'm like, okay, I need to have a picture to remind myself what I'm trying to do this year, so. That's awesome. Oh, I really love that. <laughs> that caught my eye almost right away. <laughs> um, we've got some people in the chat still dropping in, so you want to talk about publicly committing. We've got people publicly committing. They're saying yes. what they're working on here. <laughs> yes. KPW says working on my first stranded color work for fingerless Ooh. gloves. Nice. Oh. Central PA. So I'm sure that those gloves are going to come in very handy. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Zansan from Portland, Oregon. And uh, I think Zansan would love Jen to please model your oh, project my project okay uh -huh. so let's see what that looks like all put together it matches your outfit too oh, yeah oh <laughs> look at that see and then in the back that is oh, a really so good solution I love yeah because this size shawl for my body type is not going to stay on yeah. when i have the two ends you know well, and you're always tying it anyway right when and you you're make always a shawl. tying it so eliminate that tie yeah, yeah. so cute yeah all right, before I continue digging into our chat box, uh, Brenda, I want to give you a chance to update us on where you are with our Share and Move project. Okay, so 
Um, I worked a few rows here and a half double crochet. And now you don't have to work this far. You can just work a couple of rows to get yourself started if you guys want to do this uh, with your yarn groups. And then now I'm going to pick up stitches down here to knit in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to rotate this around. Actually, I'm going to flip it over here too. And this is like a provisional cast on kind of. I mean, mm -hmm. although we did a lot more crocheting mm -hmm. than a provisional cast on usually mm -hmm. is, but usually you start with a crochet chain and you pick up stitches in the bottom of your chain, but I'm just going to pick them up in my back loop because I already worked in the bottom of my chain for the crochet part. So you just basically knit your stitches across like this to pick up your stitches on your needle. You're like crochet and knitting. Then <laughs> I'm, I'm crow knitting. Wait, that's probably a thing. Is it crow I don't know. I don't you're know. not using Sounds two needles. Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until the next row and then we'll add that other needle. Yeah. So in this way, um, you know, two of us can work on the scarf at the same time because why not? We want to get this done in yeah. an hour. <laughs> See if we can do it. I think we can. All well, right, we're only so 20 I, minutes in. All right, we're doing pretty good. So we picked up all the stitches, and then we can just start knitting on the other side. Do you want to knit? I will knit. All right, pass it on down. Well, maybe we can do this. <laughs> Does this work? <laughs> Is this working? It's working. <laughs> it's working, Jen. It's, it's like we're crafty hilarious. besties. <laughs> it's like those oh memes where you're knitting the same sweater that goes together at the <laughs> same know. time. I was telling these guys, it's like the opposite of the lady in the tramp <laughs> yeah. moment. Like, except we're not slurping our spaghetti to yes. each other. We're getting further away from yes. each other. But that's not symbolic of anything. We're yes. making something together. I guess right? the flipping <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. That's okay, you ready okay. to flip? You flip. flip. Okay. Oh, my stars. This is great. <laughs> oh, that is really fun. <laughs> Brenda, while you're back to crocheting here, we did have a question pop in from Monique. So Monique is more of a beginner to crochet and wants to know why you skipped the first stitch before you started your half double crochet. And of oh. course, says Happy New Year to everybody. Okay, here, <laughs> I'll set Year. this down if you want to show okay. it. No, there I was just waiting to flip. Um, okay, so the reason that I skipped that first stitch is because it counts as a turning chain. So a turning chain is basically like, sometimes sometimes it'll count as a stitch, but um, in this case, it is just like a little bitty ladder to get you up to the next row, okay? Because your hook mm -hmm. is always working at the top and you're going down and making those stitches and bringing it back up. So you need something to make it taller on the end. So for example, here we go. I've worked all the way across here and then at the end, I'm going to do two turning chains, actually, one, two, and then we're going to turn our work. And we're using, see those two little chains are just like a little ladder to make it a little taller, and then we'll go across. And so you might be wondering, why are we doing two when before we only skipped that one chain at the, you know, on the very first row across? And that's a personal preference thing. For me, I find that if I skip two chains right at the beginning when I'm working across my very first row, sometimes it just seems like that beginning chain is kind of loose and sticks mm -hmm. out. So I just do one to make it really tight there. But a lot of people do two for a half double crochet on the ends there. But basically it's just like a little ladder to get you up to the next row. And that's how it works in crochet. You have to have some kind of turning chain to, to work across the next, um, the next row. Great. And our other question about the scarf being worked on comes from Storm. Uh, what size needle are you using? So both the crochet needle and the knitting needle sizes, what do you have in front of you? Um, this knitting needle is a U.S. size 17, which is 12 millimeter. And the crochet hook is a PQ 15 millimeter hook. So I found when I tested this out very briefly, um, <laughs> I found that w I needed my crochet hook to be just a little bigger than the knitting needle mm. um, because it, just the way that the gauge was, it was making too stiff of a fabric. And actually, I just realized now that I forgot something. On this very first row, we needed to do an increase to make up for how the knitting, uh, the knitting oh, so is going to be a little bit narrower. Yeah. So, so, it doesn't so go maybe in. we'll unknit one row mm -hmm. and then do, I just did a knit front back on the second okay. stitch and the second from the last mm -hmm. stitch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to unknit real quick here so you guys can see. Or tink. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Knitting spell backwards. Yeah. When you like go out stitch <laughs> so by stitch. So if you're, if you're un -knitting. I seriously did not know yeah, that. Yeah, that's like seriously that what that's it's called. Reason. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Tink. So I'm you can say that and sound really smart now. Slide your needle back into the, the stitch that we worked through already like this. Just poke it back in there. 
and pull that straight to unknit. Otherwise, I mean, you can just rip it out too. This yarn probably is sticky enough that I could do that, but. Mm -hmm. I already love our scarf. It's only like a foot long. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a really, really narrow neck, it would work. For yes, you, exactly. <laughs> like the size of a pencil. All right, I'm going to give this back to Jen here. Perfect. I'm going to oh. shout out Teresa's project here next. So Teresa says, this new year, hope to finish knitting, crocheting, and sewing projects that were left unfinished last mm. year. So sweaters, blankets, doll, a, a bunch of things like that. So finishing is also a good goal to have, I would say. So best mm -hmm. of luck, Teresa. Welcome to 2023. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so great. Um, Monique has a great idea, Brenda, for your doodles. You need to turn that into a calendar. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. I should. Yeah. I should. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then have every month like a little progress report, like, check so in. I can check in and be mm -hmm. like, well, did you make your did blanket you do square? It? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you clean your storage area so you can get a cat? Did you do that yet? <laughs> so while they're continuing on with their scarf, Emily, I'm going to go back to you here, yeah. um, just to get a little bit more away from knitting and crocheting, just a bit mm -hmm. to dabble in some other things. I know you do quite a bit of painting, like fun mm -hmm. with paints, um, really beautiful murals, but also just painting objects and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about how you dig into those projects? Uh, do you have an idea ahead of time that you follow through on the design or do you freehand things? How do you choose your color palette? Things like that. If you talk about that a little bit, that would yeah. be great. Yeah. So I feel like, um, like the overarching thing, right, is I feel like oftentimes, no matter what visual thing we're doing, and maybe mm -hmm. you guys can agree with this, I gravitate towards the same color palette over and over. I wear the same color clothes. My walls are painted the similar colors mm -hmm. in my house. I mean, maybe you guys can agree, yeah, right? Same. Everybody feels like they have these colors they're gravi they gravitate towards. And I always encourage people to like hone into that. Like if you're a neutral person and you love the tans and the grays and the blacks and the whites of the planet, then like live in that and be proud of that and do that thing. I don't think I own a single piece of black clothing besides maybe leggings. I don't know, that's fine. That's totally mm -hmm. just my jam, right? So when it comes to color palette, I feel like go with what's instinctual, right? If you love yellow, start with yellow and go there. And you'll kind of find the more you do things, or this is at least how I am, I find that I have the same like color yarn that I wear that's the same color on my wall, that's maybe the same pillow in my house, because I'm just not afraid to just like, hey, I don't know if this is on trend. I don't really care. I'm just gonna gravitate towards it. So it translates into my art a lot because I just feel like there's there's a level of okayness to that where I don't I actually don't feel like I ever use red like that's for mm -hmm. one example right so and I'm I'm fine with that so I feel like that encouragement of go with what you love just like run with it 100% and as far as like starting something right like we're talking about painting um, I like uh, crafts and art things that are a lot more instant. So I, that's why I love sewing. That's why I love painting because it's with your hand and you're doing it. I tried glass blowing in college and I thought it was the absolute worst thing in the world because I couldn't touch the glass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, that'd be bad news bears if you did. Um, so, so painting I've always gravitated towards and I feel like it's one of those things that this sounds so um, maybe juvenile to say, but the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it, right? Like it's like a, you know, if you like, are a workout person and you want to do 100 push-ups or something, you're not going to start by doing 100 push-ups in the very first day that you're going to do something. So like mm -hmm. that's the piece of creativity where I feel like I'm telling my kids over and over like it's a muscle that you work because the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. And so with that, to answer your question of um, what I paint, the more I draw and doodle and paint, the more I see repetitious colors, repetitious shapes, repetitious lines, the things that are kind of the basics of art that are like the same over and over again. I'm sure you guys can yeah. say the same mm -hmm. thing about patterns you write. Yep. Like maybe you gravitate towards lacy frilly things or more bold designs. And the more you do it, the more you identify the things. So like, for instance, I, I'm not a, like a very um, overly feminine person, but I love florals. So I just find myself painting bold florals all the time. And I do it and it's awesome and I love it and that's what's on the wall in my daughter's room and it's super cool. And I feel like 
that I, I started identifying like these fern sort of leaf shapes that I was painting and drawing over and over again. So that's what I started painting more of mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> in different greens and all these colors. So it's kind of a long answer to your question, but I think sometimes when we start something new, right? Like we're talking about New Year's resolutions. I think we get bogged down by all the ideas and mm -hmm. as simple as it sounds, I think just starting, and that's why I doodle a lot too, is mm -hmm. to kind of work out what's going on in my brain. The more you just do it, the more you're going to see um, if you keep a collection of a sketchbook or maybe mm -hmm. on your iPad or something, or if you you know have a Pinterest board or whatever, right. the more you start seeing patterns and repetitious things so you can identify what you gravitate towards mm -hmm. so that you can go, oh, I love that. And I don't know why I love that, but it's cool that I love that and I'm going to own that and like live in that 100%. Um, yeah, that's I a long answer to a very short question. I have to <laughs> say that Emily... I don't even remember exactly which project it was. It can apply to any of the projects, but you made a comment on one of the events that you can always paint over. You yeah. can always, mm -hmm. if you make a mistake, if you decide you don't like it, you can always paint over. And mm -hmm. I actually took that personally to my own, my cabinets in the kitchen. Yeah. And I decided that I was going to paint just the inside of, we have very old cabinets. They were with the house that was built in the thirties. So there's like an inside rectangle on yeah. all of the doors. And I just painted that because I was like, well, Emily said <laughs> I could pick a color and I yeah. could try it. And it's a small enough project mm -hmm. that I could paint over it if it looks really terrible. And I ended up loving it. But these little tips of kind of starting, trying, go back, figure mm -hmm. it out. Now I feel like maybe I can take on a bigger project the next time. So I, I love your tips when it comes to things like that. Uh, thank you for breaking some of that down for us, too. It's always nice to get a little insight into the process. Um, Liz has a very funny comment that I want to highlight. <laughs> uh -oh. So Liz took a home ec class in seventh grade. When we were learning to sew, I ended up sewing the piece of fabric that I was using to my dress. Oh, no. And I've never sewed anything since that day. <laughs> and as a seventh grader, that's, that's a big deal. I actually have done that as an adult. I was wearing <gasps> jeans, and I was working at my day job in a costume shop, talking a little too much, and I sewed my project to my pants. Yep. And what does one do then? To all of us. What do you do when you <laughs> sew your seam project? Ripper. You just have to Rip get the out. seam ripper out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And have a good laugh. Walk around with a project dangling from your pants and show it to all your coworkers <laughs> while they laugh at you. Oh my. I, well, Liz, you're not alone. Maybe, maybe you can pick up sewing again at some point, but there are plenty of other crafts available if you want to steer clear, <laughs> continue doing that. Um, Tina is healing a broken elbow. Uh -huh. Tina, I hope you're feeling better soon. Uh, hoping she can start knitting and crocheting next week. So I'm sure the elbow makes that a little tough. Uh, I can understand. She says she's going through withdrawal. So maybe a little vicarious joy yes. from watching this project take place. Should we pass Tina also oh, did sure. the same thing. Knit. Choose knit. your. All right. Choose okay, you go knit. I'm in Which the way are you going? This way. This way. I'm gonna switch swap. Yarn goals. should be coming off the right. That right. is getting there very we. long. Getting long. It's looking good. Oh, I love it. Oh, hang on. Can we untwist oh, ourselves here? Woo. <laughs> looks good. All right, so we've got Emily knitting. We've got Brenda crocheting, it looks like. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, Jen, then why don't I ask you a question okay. here? Um, this is a good one, I think, especially as people are taking on either crafting in general or a new craft. What advice would you have for people that are looking on purchasing, uh, mm -hmm. adding to their craft arsenal? How would you budget? What do you think are some must haves versus maybe push off, you don't need it right away kind of things? Uh, what are some tips you would have for that? The thing I would say is with any craft, but you know, I mostly knit and crochet, is that you can spend as much or as little money on this craft as you want. So I was at the dollar store the other day and I saw knitting needles and yarn literally for a dollar 25 each. So you could get into this craft for $2.50 <laughs> plus tax. But uh, at the same token, you know, I've also knit a sweater that cost $300, but that was a choice I made and saved up for that. Um, so when you're first starting out with the yarn crafts, I would say, 
you know, you can absolutely go to a local uh, yarn store that's a small business and they have affordable yarns there, absolutely. But if, you know, there's not one near your house or, um, you know, you just don't have the time to figure that out, you can find lots of great affordable yarns at big box craft stores, even just big box stores in general, a lot of them have yarn. Um, and they have a variety of needles and hooks. And then of course, once you find out if you even like this craft, any craft, then you can start you know, diving into the more expensive yarns, the more expensive needles. I mean, I've paid $4 for needles. I've paid $40 for <laughs> needles, you know, so it just depends. Um, but you can make a beautiful sweater for 30 bucks with yarn you bought at the big box store. So don't think that just because maybe you're hitting up social media and you're seeing all these, you know, makers making beautiful things with expensive yarn and expensive tools, that does not mean that you have to. Um, I actually have kind of been making this swing back to using yarns that are more um, co commercially available, like mm -hmm. in a big box craft store after spending years using lots of beautiful hand dyed expensive yarns. And don't get me wrong, I still love those, but you can make really cool stuff out of the cheap yarn too. So just keep that in mind. Like you can spend a ton of money on any hobby, but you also <laughs> don't have to. <laughs> Those are really great tips um, and something that I'm sure no matter what craft people are picking up, you can kind of take with you. Uh, Diane has a tip that she dropped in that I'd like to share and kind of get all three of you to weigh in on uh, because I think this is really smart, especially for people that are reward oriented. So Diane said the past few years, she spends a couple of weeks in January making two lists, one of unfinished projects that have to get done and one of things that I want to make, techniques I want to try, or gifts I want to make. Ooh. I reward myself with the trying something new after I have finished something old. And this has worked really well to help me finish things without feeling stuck on the bigger projects. Plus, it uses up her extensive stash. So her motto is shop at home first. So I would just love for you to kind of riff on that a little bit because I think this is a great idea, Diane. I think it's brilliant. I feel yeah, like we yeah. all have a box of unfinished whatever sitting. I have it in the corner of my studio mm -hmm. and it's been sitting there forever. <laughs> Probably Same. at the bottom are like things from 2017. I don't even know what's in that box, which is embarrassing to say, but I'm, I'm very much like a little kid in the way of like rewards work really well for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like, like sometimes when I need to do the dishes, I'll reward myself with like some M&Ms or something because right. you're like, I need to do the dang dishes because we don't have forks. Right. <laughs> I will eat some chocolate when I'm done. So that feels like that would work really well for me. Yeah. I like yeah. that idea a lot. Mm -hmm. One thing I did one year, and I got this idea from the Yarn Harlot, who has a yeah. website, is um, she had a lot of sock yarn, and I had a lot of sock yarn, and what she did was she matched up her sock yarn with um, patterns that she had, like, you know, PDF she had on her computer and books, and then she put them all, and I did this too, all in, like, paper bags and threw them in the closet, and then each month, you just grab one. Yeah. It's like a little surprise with stuff you already own. You're like, oh, yay, it's this yarn. I'm going to make this sock, you know? So you could do that with any type of craft project. Yeah. Like if you have a lot of stash at home, just make yourself some little like surprise bags. And when you're That's ready, a great for, idea. Yeah, when you're ready for a new project, just, yeah, it's kind of like mystery shopping in your own, <laughs> in your own closet. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. me. Brenda, what do you think? It, well, I was thinking about that and I kind of do something similar to that, but it's more mm. like about the purchasing of yarn. So every other project that I design, I try to use my stash on. I love coming up with new projects. It's like my favorite thing is designing stuff. Um, but so sometimes it's, you know, based on the yarn that I already have. I'm trying to do that every other project where I go look at my yarn and get inspired by something. Maybe it's color combination. Maybe it's just a specific, really pretty yarn, something like that, because I have a lot of yarn and I am trying to not, you know, mm -hmm. keep getting more. <laughs> Try to keep it at what it is. But then every other project I get rewarded and I get to actually choose whatever yarn it is that I want to mm -hmm. use, like design the thing that's in my head and then choose the yarn for that thing. So um, it's 
kind of a similar thing, like flip-flopping back and forth mm -hmm. and rewarding myself for use, using up something that I already have. And I do actually, that makes it sound like I don't like using the things that I already have, cause yeah. I, but I do really get a big kick out of making things out of stuff I already have, repurposing things, or like this project, I had all these little smaller balls, mm -hmm. different colors, and I've been thinking like, how am I gonna use this up? I, I you know, but then, the other day I had this idea of just making it all into two giant balls and then yeah. we could make it together. And I'm making them do my work for me. Yeah. <laughs> Brenda's going to have a lovely <laughs> scarf at the end of this. Actually, I was thinking I should give it to one of you guys. But That's the end of this. That's the end of this event. Emily's wild off. color scheme going on. Yeah. Uh, Monique actually had a really a good addition to what we were just talking about. So Monique is part of a small craft accountability group. So they meet weekly and report any yarn purchases, and there has to be a justified reason for the purchase. So you needed it to finish a current project. It was used for a special gift. Otherwise, we work from the stash. So allowed to get new patterns or needles if those are needed, but the goal of this group is to work through their stash. So that is, I would say, probably another good way uh, public accountability, going back to the very yes. beginning yeah. <laughs> of making sure that you're meeting those goals. Use the stash, use what you have, um, get your projects finished. These are all really great things to be uh, creating as goals for the new year. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that Donna brought up earlier in the chat that, uh, again, all three of you can kind of weigh in on this. Um, it's probably a good idea of something for a future project or a video as well. Uh, mm -hmm. is organization for craft. So how much, if at all, do you organize your craft room? Do you have a craft room? What things have you found that has worked for you? Um, any suggestions that you'd like to share? You can kind of, all three of you weigh in on this one. Well, I'll go first. <laughs> I probably have the worst craft room situation out of the three of us, I'm just guessing. Um, so I work on the end of my couch. And then I have all these bins with my projects in various states of completion. So I have I use a lot of project bags to keep things all bagged up with the hook that I'm using and the project that's you know in progress. Mm -hmm. um, so in that way, I'm kind of organized. But really, I need to. I found that I need to have my own little crafting corner somewhere that is not in the living room. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if you guys any of you guys saw this on my little sheet here. I was going to. Um, I was going to organize all my crafting things really well before we got a cat, but my <laughs> husband went to the cat shelter the other day and whoops, now we have a cat. So I'm like scrambling to <laughs> reorganize everything. But definitely the keeping things organized by the, you know, all the yarn that I need for that project, the hook in the bag, you know, mm -hmm. if I was using patterns, patterns in the bag, any notes, any sketches, mm -hmm. all the things contained in that bag in a bin so that I know where all my stuff is. It's just, I don't have like, I don't have a good, you know, I don't have nice cubbies and, and kind of that crafting space yet, but I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I am fortunate in that I do have one of the spare bedrooms I turned into my workspace. Um, but I find that most of my yarn actually, I do just have in bins and put in my basement. And I'm really lucky. I actually have a cedar closet down there. Um, the previous owner was like a woodworker and wow, like built this so cedar nice. closet because we never would have done anything like that. So um, it's been really nice. And so for my bins, I'll label them. So for example, I'll have a bin that's, you know, worsted weight acrylic yarns. And I just have like a big mm -hmm. piece of paper that I just wrote in permanent marker and taped on. Um, and so that's how I keep a lot of my yarn organized. I do have cubbies. Um, which I do keep yarn in that I use, um, but any like leftovers I have get sorted into those different bins mm -hmm. and then go into that closet in the basement. But, um, you know, like everyone else, the closet in my workspace is a complete disaster <laughs> and a wide variety of crafts just get shoved <laughs> in there at any given time. So I get it. It's a total process yeah. trying to get this organized. And especially, you know, for us and so many of you, we like to craft multiple different crafts and mm -hmm. so uh -huh. um, a lot of these crafts can take up a lot of space for sure yeah yep. that is so <laughs> true organization is a big thing because yep. you know i sew and i paint and i crochet mm -hmm. and knit and the all i have so many i have like beading stuff and random vintage boxes of sequins that i'm planning on <laughs> using and stuff you know like i 
can't there's throw just, those away. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I think that's the trouble when you're really creative is you mm -hmm. see what you could do with all these things. You don't mm -hmm. see what it is right now. You see like the future awesomeness of this thing. So it's really hard to pare it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the organization is literally my Achilles heel in all of life. Like I'm, na I'm naturally not organized. I have to think so hard about where something goes and like how it all gets placed. I have, I'm similar. I have a studio space in our basement. That's like a storage space and it's awesome and it's big and it's roomy, but it's, not organized at all. I know where everything is, but my husband is always like, I'm closing the door, this stresses me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know where it is, and I feel like I try to have bins of things, like similar, where like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm working on this sewing project, everything is in this bin, but then I just, I'm not good at putting things away. So I am not the person to answer that question because I know I could learn probably 900 tips and tricks from other people. I think the main thing when you're going to organize your crafts or anything like that is, I know for me, I never could have gotten everything organized in like a single day or oh, even a single yeah. weekend. Yes. No. So mm -hmm. I try now to be a little bit more aware of the fact that my workspace can turn into a disaster very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I try to make a habit out of every week or even every two weeks spending like a couple hours yeah. rather than, yeah, yeah. you know, I want to sit on the couch and cross stitch my project while watching TV. Um, but I try to take a couple hours every week or two and mm -hmm. just kind of put things back where they go. And I feel like that has really helped in being able to find stuff when I wanted mm -hmm. to pick yeah. that project, whatever project it is back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna jump in and switch the gears here. I wanna remind everybody about our mm -hmm. download. So that link is going to be in the description of today's video. And it also is in the chat box. You can scroll through there, even if you don't have a question and check out the link. It is three yarn craft ideas that you need to try. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have, I believe Jen has told us already what she has included. I'm gonna have Brenda and Emily now tell us what they've included and kind of a little bit of background on why they chose it and what to look forward to. So Brenda first. Okay, sure. So I included the celebration beanie. Okay, <laughs> so it's this cute little beanie. It's made actually with a sock weight yarn, but it's held double. So it's really like a worsted weight yarn to in total. But the reason I did that was so that I could slide all these little sequins onto one strand of the yarn. It was thin enough to go through and then hold them together um, with two strands. So the reason that I included this was because I was thinking about like, what does my crafting need to me? What do, what do I want to do about this year coming up? You know, I wanted to, I was thinking about people who are wanted, do, wanted to try something new. And so if you, if you crochet already, this is very approachable. If you've never crocheted before, I would recommend you do some, like a couple of dishcloths to just figure out how to hold the yarn and that sort of thing. But after that, this is pretty like slightly advanced beginner friendly. Um, because even though it looks kind of tricky, there's all these shiny little sequins on here. <laughs> I mean, I wanted it to look like you just got sprinkled with a bunch of confetti. Like I wanted it to be yeah. like this happy woo. And actually this reminds me of your photo that you have. <laughs> where you're, just, you're just excited <laughs> about yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, but sliding the sequins on here, it does take some time. It takes a little patience. You have to keep moving them down your yarn length, but there isn't anything tricky about it. You just slide the sequin up next to your work and you make your stitch right next to it. And then you just keep going. Um, it's, not, it's not any special motion with the hook. All it is is just moving the sequin with your one hand and doing the same stitch that you would regularly be doing um, with, your, with your other hand. So um, yeah, and so in that way, it looks like something really exciting and different and um, you know it's kind of a head turning hat but it's really <laughs> very very approachable very doable mm -hmm. awesome Emily what do you have in our packet so here let me hand this off for a second um so okay so it's keeping in the vein of using up the scraps and the stash I got turned on to um, some people call it rug hooking punch needle and I've been doing it kind of on and off actually I'm working on like just started last week working on a rug for our back entryway because it's one of those projects where like you can put down and pick back up and put down and pick back up which I really love and it's a very instantaneous project so I don't know if you can see this ah this is what a rug hook looks like there's tons of different ones out there 
Um, you can get them at big box craft stores. I'm sure you can find them inexpensively online. Sh shipping, there's of course very expensive ones, just like we've talked about. There's a range of all these materials. But um, there's this, um, mat uh, this material is called monk's cloth. You can use embroidery cloth if you want to. It's not as clothy and loose it's a little bit more stiff so just keep that in mind but there's a lot of there's not a lot of barriers to entry i guess is what i'm trying to say with this project because all you need is your scraps of yarn and a rug hook and this is connected to what i'm doing right now but ha huh, look okay this is the yeah this is the front and if you i don't know if you can tell but there's like little it's like it it's like what it does is you punch i'm going to try and do this so you can see it through this so that you can just see really quickly if I can, this is taking a lot of talent to hold this up. <laughs> oh, you want me to hold it? Can, yeah, can you just hold the frame? Okay, so if you can see what it's doing, do you see my needle going in and out? Maybe, mm -hmm. kind of, sort of? Do you want to? Yes. Yeah, okay, good, okay, good. So what this is, it's creating like a pile, like it's very three-dimensional, like a rug, like what, you know, like you're stepping on a wool rug at your grandma's house or something. It's creating that pile and you can play with like how high it is and how short it is and how big it is. I actually just saw this artist on, I don't even know, I should know this, but she was creating food, like slices of cheese out of really thin, um, thin embroidery floss and then like doing different piles, how high the pile was and creating like a realistic looking slice of cheese. It was fascinating. Wow. It was fascinating. Wow. Anyway, but this is, it's one of those projects where all you're doing is punching, right? And I can change colors of yarn at literally any point and you can have a ball of yarn that is so small or a ball of yarn that is humongous and you can go to the store and purchase thank you i can oh, put this sure. down um you can go to the store and purchase something specific for this or i like to what turned me onto it is using my scraps of yarn so all the details are in that pdf that leah mentioned and it's a very um beginner friendly project because you can't really screw it up quite frankly if you screw it up you literally just pull the yarn back out and try again <laughs> It's that easy. Is that piece sharp uh, at all? Like, yes. Could I, I, I mean, was it's, wondering it's, if my kids could do that. Oh, I mean, it's blunt. It's like a darning oh. needle. Like oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit sharp. My yeah, kids yeah. actually, um, I had one. My son made a little rocket ship pillow. And so the cool thing about this is obviously you could make a rug. You could make a pillow. You could make a backpack tag. You can finish it a million different ways, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. also really love that it's versatile like that. Yeah. Super kid friendly. Super kid friendly. Oh, awesome. awesome. I'm sure people will be getting their kids involved in some of these crafts, yeah. too. Uh, we're going to jump back. Oh, we do have time. We have a little less than 10 minutes, so uh, we'll see how long the scarf can get mm -hmm. in that time. <laughs> okay. uh, but if you've been holding on to any questions, drop them in now. We'll get to as many as we can in the time we have left. Uh, we're going to go back to organization for Rona here next. So Rona specifically is getting overwhelmed with storage of needles. So is there any uh, way you have found to store your needles in a way, I'm assuming, so you know what sizes you have, where they are, and probably so they don't get underfoot or mixed up in other things. What do you use for that, if anything? Um, for me, I too struggle still with um, needle and uh, crochet hook organization. Um, but one thing that I've done now is that I just got little plastic tubs like at the craft store. Um, they're probably meant for, well, you could put anything in them. They're at the craft store, right? <laughs> um, and so I bought a bunch of those, but I don't necessarily have enough needles to like justify having all my US size sevens in one. So I kind of separate them out by like the ones I use for socks, which would be like zero to twos those all go in one and then I work up from there maybe three to my US three to fives go in another one and so on and so forth and I pretty much primarily use um, circular needles when I'm knitting whether I'm knitting flat or in the round so they're just all my circular needles in that size range are just all in that box and I just keep a needle gauge right over by where I have my boxes on my shelf in my uh, office and when I need one I just if I can't read the number on the label because or on the needle because maybe it's rubbed off i've got my little needle gauge and i can check and that's really helped and then to be honest when i get unorganized with my needles i have a um 10 year old niece who will pretty much do <laughs> anything to earn a little money so um i have her come over and i you know, throw her five or 10 bucks and she sorts them all back out for me. Cause <laughs> I do tend to get in a habit where then I just start throwing them in a pile. So 
Um, you know, you don't obviously have to pay a child, but <laughs> you could <laughs> have your kids help you or, you know, have a friend even, or you just sit down one night and separate them all back out again. But that's part of my two hours a week organization is getting those needles <laughs> back back together in the right spot. So for me, um, I, oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead, Brenda. I was going to say for me, for my knitting needles, I, ha I made myself this little stitched case that's like you know have you have you ever seen wrenches that come in a big plastic case and you where unroll it's divided? it yeah. you unroll it and then you slide them all in so there's like a diagonal um flap that comes across the, so the pockets are different lengths um, and so i use those for my, my straight needles and also a smaller one for my double pointed needles and that way they're all kind of like laying out in in pockets like largest to smallest um and then but my yeah my circular needle is situation was not a good one <laughs> but I I think I'm going to get I've seen these books that you can buy I think knit picks has them um, it's like a zipper case mm -hmm. that has mm -hmm. those plastic envelopes in there so you can keep keep your circular needles all organized like that so I think I think I might have to do that um, my crochet hooks I have a crochet hook case for them so that that it's just like a zipper case it opens up it's kind of similar to the wrench thing except it has a couple of different areas where there's pockets and then there's a couple little zippers and i put them in there according to size so all right emily anything to add no i don't have any <laughs> piece of organizational tips especially for <laughs> knitting needles mine are in a tub um, and i shuffle through them and i'm sure you guys would be appalled it's just it's <laughs> and half the time at the bottom of a bag somewhere with the project so yay so if anything, personally, <laughs> for people feeling disorganized out there, hopefully you'll find some camaraderie here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to notice that the theme does seem to be crafters <laughs> struggle with organization. So maybe yeah. the, the fix is to uh, find a friend or mm -hmm. a family mm -hmm. member that wants to earn some money that uh, yeah. wouldn't mind <laughs> sorting true. through some of your things for yeah. you. <laughs> And I, I would also say if you're looking for inspiration, I know like when I get overwhelmed with all of my crafts, I start going on YouTube to watch videos of people doing just craft room tours. Oh. And I do not have the space in my house to have some of these like amazing craft rooms that people have. Wow. But I have gotten just so many ideas from just yeah. watching these videos. Um, and I'll just turn one on while I'm, you know, knitting or crocheting or cross stitching or whatever. And just, I mean, I love watching people or like redo their craft space or just idea. do a tour of all the stuff they have in it. So you can get a lot of inspiration that way too. All right. Well, Rona's happy to know that she is not alone. <laughs> you definitely yeah. are not alone. Um, and we will keep this in mind for maybe uh, something that we can do in the future uh, to talk a little bit more about some organization ideas and things like that. Uh, so keep keep an eye out, everybody. Hopefully we'll be able to put something together for you. Uh, I think we have time for one more question and I'm going to ask Jody's question here. So Jody has arthritis in her hands and is wondering what kind of hooks would be best to work with that condition? Well, I really love using um, the Clover Amour hooks. There's lots of other, oh, actually Jen has it in oh, her hand. here we go, right um, here. So this is kind of a funny example because it's gigantic, but they have these nice rubbery handles that really help not only are they a little bit softer in your hand but there's a little tiny bit sticky so you don't have to grip it as tightly mm -hmm. you know because right. it doesn't slide around in your hand you ha can have like a looser grab on it mm -hmm. and it doesn't yeah so that that really helps me um to keep my hands from getting sore yeah i definitely recommend you know trying out some different hooks though because what works for me might not be the best for everybody else depending on how you crochet how you hold things what kind of yarns you're using you know all those different factors can affect that. So I would just try some different ones out, but definitely look for ergonomic hook handle, er, hooks with ergonomic handles. Yes. And yeah. I would say too, um, and I don't know the maker, I can't remember the maker of these, but if you go online and search for like even handmade ergonomic hooks, I know that at one time there was a maker on Etsy who was taking just your regular old kind of inexpensive crochet hook and they were making these very thick handles on them 
Um, so even if you hit up a website like Craftsy or, just, or excuse me, Etsy and do, or do a Google search, you might be able to find even um, a small business or a maker who's making that type of thing as well. I think there's some tutorials too online how to do that yourself. My friend Molly, for um, maybe for Christmas or for my birthday or something, she gifted me some hooks that have Sculpey, you know, oh that yeah. clay stuff that yeah. you bake in the mm -hmm. oven. Polymer clay. She, she had me put my hand on my hook and make an indentation where I wanted it to be. And then she brought it back home and then she baked it in her oven. So she that's customized cool. my crochet hooks oh, with that. Cool. So that's another thing you could check out. Awesome. All right. Fast hands now. I'm going to finish us off. We've hit the end of our hour. One at a time, I would love for you to go down the row and just share any final thoughts that you have, any inspiration that you want to give our viewers as they head into 2023 with all of the crafting ideas bubbling in their brains. Uh, I'm gonna start with Emily, work our way down, and then it'll be time to reveal the scarf. Great. So Emily first. I feel like my biggest try something and start something new is try your best not to consume and just start. Like I think we're consume, 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 consume and watch every tutorial and watch every tidbit and trip and tip and trick, which I'm so happy you're here today, but just start. Just try, try your hand at it and then maybe watch another tutorial, but then go back and do it. And then maybe watch another tutorial. Don't just be a consumer. Try to be a maker as much as you can. I would say my two cents is to just go for it and allow yourself to make some ugly things at the <laughs> beginning because I mean maybe they'll be awesome you don't know until you try it right but I've made a lot of really ugly things and I have learned so much from those things and now most of the things I make I really like so it just takes a while until you can kind of get a feel for a craft you know don't Punish yourself if it doesn't turn out right away. You all, you have to have like what you were talking about the muscle memory. Like you have to give your body a chance to learn how to make all the motions. Whether mm -hmm. you're drawing, you know, knitting, crocheting, sewing, whatever you're doing, it takes a while to get you know to allow your body to make those motions. And it also takes a while for your mind to catch on sometimes to these kinds of things. So you got to do both things and just be nice to yourself. Try out something new. Don't be afraid to have a couple of big failures. It's okay. <laughs> you can go back and fix it mm -hmm. or redo it, and you'll know so much more. Yeah, I was going to say just about the same thing that these two said is that you just have to remember that, you know, today we're kind of talking about yarn crafts. So you're just talking about a bunch of string and some needles or some type of hook. Like if you mess it up irreparably and you take the whole thing out, like, yes, it was your time, but you probably learned something from that. And so just, yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I literally accidentally knit a 40 foot scarf. That is not a joke. A 40 foot <laughs> scarf? Yeah, um, <laughs> like literally <laughs> accidentally <laughs> because I didn't know anything about gauge. So like, but it's hilarious to tell the story now, like, but that's, it happened, you know? So just don't be afraid to make mistakes. And uh, you're, you're gonna definitely learn things from all those mistakes anyway. All right. Well, amazing. Thank you so much. I'm going to have you take a moment and spread that scarf out while I share a couple Aww. final pieces of information. Look Ooh. at that. Oh, my it goodness. Is. It's actually long enough to be yeah. a scarf. Who wants to wear it? Do you want to wear it, Emily? Sure. I feel oh, like it matches oh, your not outfit. Quite best. 40 feet, Jen, but we're yeah, not quite. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Oh, it means the lovely, lovely, lovely. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, all three of you. To our viewers, if you are familiar from before with only one of them, I can promise you, Jen, Brenda, and Emily, all with their tutorials, make all of their crafting super accessible. They have great tips and tricks, and they're also super encouraging. So if your new craft happens to be moving from one of their areas of expertise to another, definitely come back, see them coach you through some of the tutorials this year. We're going to have a lot on our plates for you to join in on. So thank you to them for today, but of course, come back for more. And of course, don't forget to download the free crafting bundle and your goal setting worksheet. That link is going to be in the description of today's video. So we have to say farewell for now, but we will see you soon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Leah, and on behalf of all of our instructors at Craftsy, have a wonderful new year. Happy crafting.